starting slipping. <coughs> Go easy, some of that in there is actually me. Now I know what Vivian Lee went through on Gone with the Wind. You have to tone it. Try the gents. Derek, you're going to have to go down. She's in the lighting grip. Don't ask me how she got up there, but she's not coming down. Derek, I'm on my way. What's going on? The cat from the opening shot's gone walkabout. Where's Tony? No idea. He should be here. Tony! Don't mind me, love. No one's looking. This cubicle's occupied. Tony, it's me. Leave me alone. I need you. I need me too. Go away. I don't see what you're worried about. You've done your part. It's up to us now. Exactly. Shouldn't you be somewhere? Forget the cart. Find those two hooligans from the tanner scene, get them down here, tell Edna it's the same day so there's no costume change. Give Maudie something to do in the doorway. Try the bubblegum machine and tell Frank I want the kids in silhouette. I don't want to see their faces. This girl's got him right in. Doesn't even flatter. Have I meant Imperial? May I? And what time is it? Uh, it's seven, just coming up. Well, come on, it's about to start. Listen to that rain. Well, it's perfect for it anyway. Well, you can rely on Manchester for that. Turn it up. Okay, people, this is it. Going live in ten. Good luck, everyone. Rock fun, rock fun. From the north, this is Granada. Well, I'm old enough to chicken, old enough to rock of the bar. Well, I'm old enough to cheek and old enough to rock with the bar. Because I'm old enough to cheek and old enough to rock of the bar. Well, I'm old enough to cheek and old enough to rock of the bar. Hello, it's uh, Tony Warren. Warren. To see Margaret Morris. Casting. I'm an actor. You don't say. Third floor. There's just nothing I can do about it. Thank you, Josie. You're quite right. I do the same. It's just the way we have to do it at Granada. Goodbye now. Sorry about that. Now, where were we? Well, you were killing my acting career. Tony, you have to be realistic. This is television. You've had a good run for your money, but you're at that awkward stage. Stick to radio, darling. You can be what you like there. I've had enough for radio. And anyway, I don't think they want me back. Well, I'm sorry. There's just nothing for you at the moment. <clears throat> well, you know, thank you for your time. It's a pity you're not a writer. They're crying out for them upstairs. Actually, I am a writer. I mean a script writer. So did I. Oh. Are you any good? No. I'm brilliant. Of course. <laughs> My mistake. Well, there's a producer, Harry Elton. Oh, uh, the Canadian Shadow Squad. That's the one. He's looking for northern writers to nurture. Excuse me. That's the foremost, all right. He ought to have four. He ought to have half a stone and hand. Ought to? What happens if he loses? He can't lose, I tell you. He's a good one. Now, how much are you going to have on it? Oh, well, half a crown each way. Half a crown each way. Paradise Lake. Who's the bookie? Who's the bookie? I want to know if you want to know a thing like that. That must be mad. Just to be sure it's safe. Your name's not on these lists. Really? Oh, well, well, it should be. Could you ring through to Mr. Elton's office? It's Tony Warren, the writer. I thought you were an actor. Oh, well, that was yesterday. 
Well, I don't understand it. Margaret Morris specifically said she'd arrange an interview. Well, she's not said anything to me. Mm. Well, perhaps she spoke to Mr. Elton directly. It's in his interest to see me. Well, there's nothing in the diary and he's rather busy. I've got a voice that needs to be heard. And if Mr. Elton doesn't snap me up, somebody else will. I'm trying to work in here. Mr. Elton, I'm Tony Warren. I'm a writer, I'm northern, and I'm ready to be nurtured. How old are you? I'm 23. Please, may I give you this? What is it? Shadow Squad. I've written you the first half of a script. If you want to know how it ends, ring me on Pendleton 5698. You might want to write that down. It's Pendleton... 5698. I got it. Well, thank you for seeing me. I'll let you get on with your work. Goodbye. I'll take that from you. No, no. You should never chain smoke alone, you know. Do you want one? Would you mind? No, I hope so. Thanks. You were in to see Margaret the other day, weren't you? Yeah, it was just a general meeting. I thought so. It's Josie, right? Yeah, I never forget a face. And I never forget a name. Tony Warren. I'm guessing she had nothing for you. Oh, well, she did, as a matter of fact. A coffin for my acting career. Oh, sorry. Oh, well, don't be. I've just had a meeting with Harry Elton, the producer. Do you know him? Of course. Yeah, well, he's very interested in a script of mine, so... Oh, a writer as well as an actor. Well, I've always been a writer, really. Since I was 12, as a matter of fact. I used to play wag from school for weeks on end. And I'd sit in that vast, circular central library. And I'd just devour plays. It's where I learnt my craft. And the school didn't mind? No, we didn't know. Uh, yes, hello. I'm afraid Tony's not at all well again. I'll just have to keep him off school a little while longer. And they believed you? Of course. I'm a dab hand at me, Mother. <sighs> Good God, Mother, whatever colour's that? African violet. And don't say God. It's for your father's ladies' evening. Well, what are you standing there looking to go on list for? May I have the pleasure of this dance? Certainly. But Mama Hem, you've got feet like your father. I was wearing deep purple when I first met him. It was at the Langworthy Dance Studio. They used to put French chalk on the floor to give your feet a bit of extra zip. Oh, if I close my eyes, I can still picture it. Pendleton 5698. Who? Harry Elton. Well, he's pretty good. I'll give you that. So, sorry, who is? Your father. Your father, the writer. My father's never written anything in his life. He imports fruit. Uh, no, I'm the writer. Really? Are you a drug addict? Certainly not. The story you've written, it's all about drug addiction. Yes, well, I thought it was a very shadow squad. See, it's all in the detail. Is it? Oh, yes, I'm, I'm very thorough when it comes to research. Uh, for instance, if I was to write something with a Canadian in it, I'd want to know exactly which province my character was born in, Ontario, for example, uh, where he was educated, Detroit, perhaps, and if then he'd come to England, trained at Rao. Okay, okay, you've done your homework. Well, I have to admit, I'm curious to see how it ends. Congratulations, Mr. Warren. You've just become Britain's youngest television scriptwriter. Liked it. I loved it. <laughs> He wants me to finish it, and he's commissioned me to write another. I'm getting my own bloody office. Oh, tell me.
you the look of a lad who needs a brew. Thank you. Do you mind? No, help yourself. Got your item biggles now, has he? If you feel the urge to drop it in your urn, don't let me stop you. I would have thought it was just up your street. Oh, now, don't be kidded by the speech and drama. I'll have you know I'm from Swinton. Me too. I'll tell you what, I've got a plate full of biscuits on the trolley for the conference room. Do not miss a couple. Ta. Bedboard and romance. Did you ever do that one? Yes, I did. Oh, God, it was awful. Can't believe I never saw you in anything. I saw you. You didn't. I did. You were the Saxon players, Hume Playhouse. You played two parts. A schoolboy and then a chairman of a board of school governors or something. You had air full of white talcum powder. Goodbye, Mr Chips. Well, I was rather good in that, don't you think? You were. But every time you moved your head, a little cloud of talc would float up around you. <laughs> Goggles are not straight. Can we sort that out? More snow, guys. More snow. Mmm. Very Ingrid Bergman. Well, I was trying more for Ingmar, actually, but at least I try. Unlike some people. What was that supposed to mean? He pulls the thing which lands the plane. Which is exactly? Well, how should I know? Well, you wrote it. So? Just tell him to grab whatever he wants. No bugger's gonna care what he's on about anyway. And why should they if we don't? It starts with the writer, Tony. I can only direct what I'm given. If it isn't true for you, what hope is there for the rest of us? On camera one, coming to two, please. Right, more so. Yes, 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 of Biggles and Ginger and all the bloody chums. There's people begging to write this stuff. Well, let them. But I'll tell you something, I'm not the only person who feels this way. We thought the whole point of a new channel was to be different, to do something new. I want to write something real. Something from the heart. Something with dirt under its fingernails. Do you understand what I mean? Please come down from there and we can talk about this properly. No. Not until you agree. OK, I agree. Anything to get you down. Agree to what? To whatever you want, just come down. So you'll let me write what I want to write? What else can I do if anyone with an earshot is going to get any work done this afternoon? Can you hold these? They could do with some fresh water. So you want to write about something real? Yes, about something I know. What do you know? Theatre. I can write about that. No, it's the kiss of death. What else? Well... I know about out there. I know about Manchester. Can you write about that? Of course I can. I'd write about a street. A real street out there. A back street terrace and all the people who live in it. How long will it take? Is tomorrow fast enough? Are you serious? Well, I've already written it in a way. You have a script? Well, I had a script. Tried to sell it to the BBC, never even got a proper reply, so I ripped it up. Pity. I could write it again. I could make it better. It is a strong idea. Strong enough to take Britain by storm. That's what they're looking for. It will be on your desk in 24 hours. Get yourself an umbrella. Morning, Jack. Morning. Don't tell me. Today we're a painter. Oh, don't think I couldn't be. What is it? It's Prince Florizel, hack 
making his way through the enchanted forest. Very nice. Yeah, I thought it might cheer up the office. What do you mean he hasn't read it? The studio till late last night. Well, did he say anything when you gave it to him? Yes, he did, as a matter of fact. He said thank you. Oi! He's in a meeting on the seventh floor, then he has a lunch and he's casting at two. All right. All right, I'm going. I love the hair today, by the way. Thank you. I'll let you know as soon as there's any news. What's that doing on the wall? Cheering me up. I kept my side of the bargain. I had that script on your desk in 23 hours and seven minutes exactly. What have you done with P.T.? Have you read it? You know the rules. The only picture permitted is P.T. Barnum. To remind us that, that there's one born every minute. No, to remind us that we are supposed to be making the greatest shows on earth. And what does every great show need? A chariot race, the parting of the Red Sea. This is Granada, Tony. What every great show needs is a memo. A what? A memo, neatly typed on grey paper, setting out exactly what your show's all about. What we're going to see, who we're going to see, where we're going to see it, and why we're going to like it. A memo for upstairs. Can't they just read the script? <laughs> this is television, Tony. No one reads scripts. Where did you get the name from, by the way? Florizel Street. Yeah. It's from my head, like everything else. I'll be back in an hour. But did you like it? An hour. Read that bit back to me. Seven terraced houses, an outdoor beer licence, the back wall of a raincoat factory, the Glad Tidings Missions Hall, and a pub named The Rover's Return. You do realise this is supposed to be my lunch break? I need something before it. Totney, please. No, no, it has to be perfect. Right. A volume of unwritten rules. Uh, no, wait. Uh, a fascinating Freemasonry. A vo Why aren't you typing? A fascinating Freemasonry, a volume of unwritten rules. These are the driving forces behind working class life on a street in the north of England. I overheard a conversation this morning. See, the minute I saw you, I knew you'd have your uses. I told you I was Margaret Morris's assistant, and you thought, oh, I'll get in with her. So, go on, this conversation, was it about me? Not everything's always about you. But yeah, this time it was. Yeah, well, go on, go on. Right, Margaret Morris was talking to Harry, who's very excited about your script. And? They've sent it upstairs. They're having a meeting to discuss it tomorrow. Well, already I only sent the memo yesterday. They obviously like it. <sighs> I feel sick. <laughs> Tony, you knew that Mr Sidney would have to read it eventually. You can't order a paperclip without him knowing about it. Yeah, but Josie, Sidney Bernstein's worked with Chaplin and Hitchcock. And now he's working with Tony Warren. Don't worry, he will love it. We all love it. Morning, Jack. Morning, Mr. Sidney. Oh, Jack. Yes, Mr. Sidney. Uh, do you mind if I ask you something? Certainly, Mr. Sidney. Do you ever repair your bicycle in the living room? Uh, no, Mr. Sidney, I, I can't say that I do. Thank you. Who wants to see a back street in the middle of nowhere? I drove in this morning from the airport, past beautiful houses, houses with gardens, 
houses with television aerials. That's our audience, Harry, Granada Land. But every city has streets like this one, and every street has its Elsie Tanner and its Ina Sharples. This is television for everyone. Leave the privileged few to the BBC. Uh, Ina Sharples, that's the old lady, isn't it? Even her name sounds uh, unpleasant. <laughs> and that's exactly as it should be. Look at Dickens. He found the extraordinary in the ordinary. He celebrated the grotesque. And uh, that's what we're supposed to be doing, is it? Celebrating the grotesque in show business, Harry. Our job is to entertain, to take people out of themselves. Now, Hitchcock, he used to say to me, Sydney, you know what drama is? Life with the boring Life bits with cut. Life with the boring bits cut out, exactly. Now, what your writer seems to have done is to pick up all the boring bits and strung them together one after another. I'm sorry, Harry, but this is, is too important for us and for the channel. All right, did I tell you about Barnum? He didn't start in the circus business till he was 60. 60 years old, same age as me. He started at 60 and became the best in the world. Quality entertainment, that's what I want for Granada. Oh, I uh, saw Arthur Miller in London last week. He's interested in writing for us. That's something we can talk about. Okay, thank you. Can I join you? Not much company. Get yourself a bowl of custard. Always cheers me up. Oh, come on, Tony. Crack a smile, why don't you? What have I got to smile about? You fall in at the first hurdle. Good job Harry's got more stamina. How do you mean? Everybody always says no to a great idea. Harry won't give up. Cecil. You found it. I've got a table over here. Thanks for the game. I suppose you chose this place to prove a point. Are these customers real or did you hire extras? Let me get you a drink. No, no, thank you. I can't stay. Well, I read it. And what did you think? It's got its merits. Your brother doesn't seem to think so. Oh, well, Sydney always takes things very seriously. But you agreed to meet me, so you may be thinking a little differently? Well, let's put it this way. I'm very aware that we've made a commitment to broadcast programs that reflect the lives of people People like this. And no one can deny your script does that. But... But Sidney's right. Most of the characters are unsympathetic and there's so many of them. I mean, so many families. That's the beauty of it. The story of a street where every life interconnects. Mm -hmm. It'll mean building a lot of sets. And look at the army game. One heart, ten characters. Everyone's happy. <laughs> <laughs> this young writer of yours, is he really 23? Yes. Meet him. He's extraordinary. No, no, that's all right. That's your department. Is he under contract? Yes. Will he listen to you? He wants to see it made. Look, Cecil, I have a suggestion which might help change Sidney's mind. Oh, it's you. I don't see how you do any work in all this squalor. And uh, don't be confused by the illusion of chaos. Everything has its place. So, I had to bribe Brenda the Beautiful, but I read your script. And? A masterpiece. Of course. Seriously, Tony, I love it. Who are they going to get to direct it? Well, I've asked for you, obviously. And Dennis Park into design. I need my support group. Perfect. And Brenda tells me upstairs, aren't you, Abby? Yeah, they hate it, apparently. It's never going to happen. Let's talk about something else, please. Anything. Well, the writer's young. And he's on contract. For 30 pounds a week, no matter how much he writes. And we'd be using local actors, so we'd be saving on travelling expenses, hotel bills. Well, is that a good enough reason to make a programme? Well, it's consideration. I mean, so many shows have been going over budget. Look how much we spent bringing the Russian ballet over for Chelsea at night. And now, Hewitt wants to take a film crew to Cuba to interview Batista. Oh, no, that I like. No, I know, Sydney. But like it or not, we have a commitment to make programmes here in the North. Well, I know, I know. Look, I'm not being unsympathetic, but a Manchester accent doesn't exactly lend itself to television. Nobody in London will know what's going on. I had to read the script 
four times myself before even I could understand it. Well, maybe we should stop reading it and listen to it. Harry's come up with a suggestion. He wants to get some actors together and do a dry run. Shoot a pilot. He's passionate about it, Sidney. And isn't that why we brought him over from Canada in the first place? Well, I, I thought we brought him over because he understood commercial television. Perhaps he does. Ah, oh, you're the hero of the whole of the North. Of everyone who's ever crossed the backyard at midnight and sat in an ice cold lab season. We're only talking a trial program, not for transmission. There's a few things I'd like to change. There's a couple of lines I don't like, and I'd like to change the outdoor beer license to a corner shop. That way, Florey can get done for selling fire lighters after seven. And the Barlow should have two sons rather than Kenneth and Enid, because it's too much like Elsie having Dennis and Linda. Darling, it's all very well saying you don't want to look in London, but that's where everybody is. I'm not saying we won't look in the north. Of course we will. We're not going to London. Tony, they're actors. You, of all people, should know that. They can act it. No, they'll try, but the viewers will always sniff out an imposter. We need Salford and Manchester, Lancashire to push. Well, I thought I'd start a bite. In the beginning was the word. I'll write down the names of every northern actor who's ever trod the boards. I'll start with Dora and Thora. Well, Thora Heard, we can't afford her, can we? We can't afford Dora Bryan, either. But if we're doing this list, we're doing it properly. No fancy curtains. Elsie Tanner has peeling paintwork on her front door. It probably hasn't seen a lick of paint for 15 years. The Barlows are very house proud, so clean lace curtains. Oh, and a, uh, a pot vase in front of them, looking out onto the street. But nothing fancy, though, because he's only got a postman's wage. Milk bottles on every doorstep. Mainly two, but Mr Tatlock lives on his own, so he'll just have the one. Which one does he live in? Yeah, well, at the moment, number three, but I'm thinking of swapping in with the Barlows because I don't think Ida Barlow would ever live next to a public house. And you want cobbles? Yeah, of course I want cobbles. Get yourself a stencil set. No, no, never. He's a possible Jack Walker. No, she's worth seeing. He's got a lisp. Have you found Doris yet? Who? Doris Speed. We did Children's Hour together on the radio. She's given up the business. I haven't heard of her for years. And who is she for? Annie Walker. She's perfect. Right, I'll track her down. He's a possible Kenneth Barlow. <laughs> well, what's so funny? That's a bit like you. You don't want to blame yourself, do you? No. You can't sit both sides of the desk. <laughs> Only asking. Remind me again of that Elsie Tanner description. Mid-40s. Battered remains of looks and figure. Hey, don't worry. We'll know her when we see her. We made a decision, Margaret. We made a decision yeah, together made to only see Northern actors. Tony! What are you looking at? Send the next one in. Harry, you've got to talk to Margaret now. Harry, I mean it. I'm in the middle of a meeting. She's had some actress up there with Wimbledon written all over her. I know what she's doing. She's panicking. She doesn't have the faith in the North that I have. You've got to go down there and tell her. They have to be real. If they're not real, no one will understand. Tony, calm down. Say hello to Harry Kershaw. Hello. Hello. I was just saying how much I admire your script. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to working on them. Sorry? Harry's coming on board as script editor. I don't need a script editor. Just give us a minute, Harry. Tony, I'll talk to Margaret. Don't worry. If necessary, I'll stand at Piccadilly Station and send any Southerners back on the London train. And as for Harry, yes, you do need a script editor. You can't do this without support. I thought you'd approve of him. He's from Manchester. So you really talk to her? I promise. Oh, have you heard? Josie's found your actress. Who? The Annie Walker, but she works for a brewery now. Go talk to Josie, and don't worry about Margaret. No, Valerie, we leave two spaces after a full stop. Didn't they teach you anything at that secretarial college? Good afternoon. Is that Doris Speed? Who is speaking, please? I was wondering if you could come in for an audition. Tell her I wrote the part especially for her. The writer has created the part especially for you. Tony Warren? Never heard of She's never heard of you. Try Tony Simpson. 
It's my real name. Does the name Tony Simpson mean anything to you? Simpson? Oh, dear. Indeed it does. The little boy who never stopped talking. Yes, that'll be him. What's she saying? Well, he's a writer now, and he barely talks at all. He has written the most perfect part for you. I can't for the life of me think why. Television, did you see? Yes. He's gone to all that trouble. I suppose it'd be rude of me not to come. Miss Speed, could you step in here? Certainly, Mr. Henley. I'm just on the phone to the accounts department. Won't be a moment. When did you say you wanted to see me, dear? Thursday? Four? Yes. It's really about a back street in Salford with ordinary families. Absolutely. I've never dressed anything like it. I don't know where to start. I thought it would be easy enough. Just put them in ordinary clothes. I run a costume department. We don't have clothes. We have costumes. But never let it be said that Edna Walker doesn't rise to a challenge. If you want ordinary, ordinary is what you'll get. Would you like to take it from the top of page 21, please, Mr Speed? I'll be reading Jack for you. Where's my clean shirt? Where do you think it is? It's on the bed. And what's you standing there looking so gormless for? Well, I'd just like to know what I've sorry, done. Sorry, sorry. With the, um, with the gormless line, uh, could you try saying it more despairingly? Like, um... And what are you standing there looking so gormless for? And what are you standing there looking so gormless for? Well, I'd just like to know what I've done. Am I ever going to meet your brother? I would. Now, listen. I brought a young lady home. She's choking on, on the bed, Battenberg. And for heaven's sake... What are you doing Sunday tea time? Moving. I want to have a bath and something to eat before the rush starts. Thank you, Doris. Can I just ask, would you mind if we were to age you up slightly? Age me up? Yes, we were thinking Annie was somewhere around... 55? Oh, well, yes, I suppose I wouldn't object to ageing up to... Should we say 52? Perfect. Thank you. I love them so. I can just go. Oh, be trying to get some sleep. Oh, we're only singing. Save your voices for churches. This is a decent street. Oh, shut up yourself. What did you say? He said, shut up. And wash those necks. They're a disgrace. <laughs> Yeah, you're cutting off my circulation. Guess who I've found. Who? <laughs> Don't make it obvious. Look over my right shoulder, look down the corridor, and it's the boy sitting on the bucket. I said not obvious, Tony. His name's William Roach, and he's an actor. Where's he from? Derbyshire. Don't panic. That's not bad. In fact, he's a bit of a dish. Yeah, don't get too excited. I don't think you're back for the same team. Oh, he's not my type. He's not muscular enough. Kenneth Barlow doesn't have muscles, though, does he? No, yes, yeah, you're quite right. It's uh, definitely a bucket. Hello, I'm Josie from Casting. I don't think we've met. It's oh, William, no. isn't it? Uh, yes. Have you got a minute? Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah. How's that play going? Where did you get this? I don't care what they do in St. Helens, but in Salford, no one puts soap next to bacon. In 27 episodes of Biggles, no one ever argued about what the inside of a Turkish jail looked like or what furniture Matahari would have in her bedroom. And ever since we started putting up these sets, every bloody spark in the building seems to have an opinion. Well, what do you think? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, it's Elsie's. It really is. Oh, you have no idea what it's like to stand inside something that's only ever existed in your head. But we need a set of three plaster ducks on this wall. Oh, you start. Oh, don't worry, I've got some in a drawer at home. I'll bring them in. 
Now all we need is someone to live in it. Bloody hellfire, am I too late? I thought I wouldn't chance the train, so I got my fella to drive me. He's got a taxi, so he knows the roads. But I think he reckoned I was a paying customer the time he took. Then a fruit van crashes on Deansgate. Grapefruits as far as the eye could see. It's always a case, isn't it, when you're in a hurry? Oh, and then to top it all, I think I twanged one of my stockings on a door back there. <sighs> Pat Phoenix, here's my pictures. Oh, you were meant to be here an hour ago. I know, I told Bill. I said, well, I've done it quicker on the tandem. I'll just sit over here, shall I? Sorry, what's the part? Oh. Elsie Tanner. All right, thank you. Sorry, you've a late arrival. Pat Phoenix? Never heard of her. She was supposed to be here at three. I know her. I was in luck with her. But her name was Pat Pilkington, then. Hello, please. Oh, she was called Frederica Pilkington. I saw her play the Wicked Queen in Snow White. Oh, this is Patricia Dean. I've auditioned her before. She's too young for Elsie. Well, I, th I thought we were supposed to finish at five. Shall I send her away? No. Tell her to wait. Sorry, I wasn't sure if I should come in or not. Come in. Right. Just get myself sorted. Well, she's not changed. Hey, she used to do this thing where she'd cut the ends of her bras off. So underneath her costume, a nipple show. Oh, I love her already. I wonder if she does it for auditions. Mm -hmm. Right. How do you want me? Uh, take a seat, please. Josie! Hello, Pat. What happened to Pilkington? Oh, too much of a mouthful. I am now Patricia Phoenix, rising from the flames. The bird that burned its bum. Uh, Patricia, please, could we have a look at scene two? Call me Pat. Pat. Any questions about Elsie? I take it she's mutton, is she? Dressed as lamb? Uh, yes, but she carries it well. She works in the slightly better dress department at Miami Modes. Think CNA without the floor space. Right. Where would you like me to read from? At the bottom of page six. Before we start, I wondered, do you want to take your coat off? No, thank you, I'm fine. I'll leave the rest to your imagination. Who's reading him? Tony, I'll read, Dennis. Actually, do you mind if I stand? Not at all. Go ahead. <sighs> right. Come on, Dennis Tanner, where is it? Where's what? Don't try coming the innocent with me, you know, as well as I do. I don't know what you're talking about. Two shillings gone out of my purse. That's what I'm talking about. Well, what are you looking at me for? It's nothing to do with me. No, oh, I suppose some Mayfair cat burglar called in and nicked it. Funny, eh? Now, let's get this straight. Not an hour ago, you asked me for two bob for cigarettes. And you wouldn't give it me, we know. So you stooped to going in a lady's handbag? Just listen it. A lady, is that what you crack on you are these days? A fine son. A fine son you are. That tongue of yours will get you on one of these days. Oh, give over. You've lost two bob. I don't know what it is. What am I supposed to do about it? Get work. Get work. That's what you're supposed to do about it. Oh, change the record, will you? Did you go down to the labour today? No, I'm not due till tomorrow. You know what your trouble is, don't you? You just don't want work. Oh, just drop it, will you? No, I won't. Every time I Look. try to... Oh, well, you know as well as I do why I can't get a job. You've been out to that place seven weeks now. Oh, no, don't let's wrap it up. If you mean prison, say it. Everyone else does. You can't go on like this. And what am I supposed to do? Just tell me that. Why did it have to be me that had to have a son like you? I suppose you'd rather have me like Kenneth Barlow at number three. And what's wrong with him? And let me tell you something, he'll have no trouble getting a job because he's got it up here in the upper story and that's where it counts. I sometimes wish we were more like them Barlows. At least they're not grabbing all the time. Good enough for you.
one. None of them are right. Ina is a 70-year-old woman with the vitality of a girl of 17. We've seen nearly 50 actresses. And after everyone has trudged out of the door, you've had that look on your face. What look? You know what look. You probably practice it in the mirror. Tony, you're choosing an actress, not somebody to spend the rest of your life with. Look, Tony, we know none of them are perfect, but we start rehearsing the dry run tomorrow. We need an Ina. We need her now. Fine. She's the best of the bunch. Excuse me, pet. I'm after Florizel Street rehearsal room. Oh, it's right here. Are you, uh... uh Nita Valerie, well recognised. I'm playing in the shop. Oh, thank God we're just about to start. Follow me. Oh, it's like a maze, this place. I've been all over. On the same schedule as a live show. We have two days rehearsal in here, one day in the studio, and then on Friday we record as though it were the live show. So sorry, everybody. Uh, Nita Valerie playing Ina. Uh, take a seat, please, Nita. Here, allow right, me. so, uh, <laughs> where was I? Um, yes, transmission. We will be recording as if it were a, a live... Thanks, oh, ever so. Uh, sorry. OK. Oh, yes, dear. You carry on. So, once we start recording, we don't stop until we reach the end of the episode. Script. Script. Doris, are you in this? Yes, dear. We're all in this. Right, so I want everybody off book by the uh, producer's run. No exceptions. It's no worse than when you're working in rep. And at least you can forget the lines the minute you've said them. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please gather around and have a look at Dennis Parkin's beautiful set? You all right, love? Yes, dear. I've just got rather used to radio where one doesn't actually learn the lines. Doris, part. Right. Here it is. It's Florizel Street. This is Robert's return. Uh, Elsie Tanner's living room. Florizel. I beg your pardon. Oh, oh I'm sorry. It, it's just that. Yeah. What well, you, you said, Florizel. Uh, I, I thought the pronunciation was Florizel. Sorry. No, it's Florizel Street. Isn't that right, Tony? Yes, that's right. Thank you. It's a bit awkward, though. No one seems to be able to pronounce it. I think everybody can pronounce it. Thank you. So Florizel. Yes. Yes. Florizel. Right, everyone, let's get on. So, William, this is your house. Uh, where's Ina's house? She hasn't got one. Oh. Uh, she lives in the mission hall in the vestry, but we don't go there in these two episodes. Uh, we'll go there in episode three. Well, I thought we were only making two. We are for this dry run, but if it works, we'll keep going. Great. So. Hey, come on now. I promise it won't take long. Are you joking? No, you asked me where I came from. You're not telling me that you come from round here. <laughs> hey, now, see, my grandmother lives just up there. And she expected to see all of her daughters every day, so us children got dragged along too. And I'd sit there under the table, hidden by the cloth, and I'd listen. See, that's where I learned that women's speech patterns are quite different to men's. All those aunties, and there was just me and my granddad, and my uncle Jim, the singing waiter. And my grandmother would sit there, one daughter black lead in the grate, another up on a chair hanging the curtains, and my poor mother cleaning the brasses. And she'd turn to me and she'd say, hey, never get old, our tone. You know a bugger loves you when you're old. <laughs> I'll love you when you're old. Don't you worry. Voices telling stories, that's all any of us can hope to be. But it's your voice, Tony. And that's all that matters. Is it? I just kept my ears open, that's all. No. You've made something that everyone can hear. Something that belongs to you. And if any bugger tries to take it from you, I'll scratch their eyes out. It's like my sister's husband. He when they had a plumbing in the place where they live. Uh, they gave her ideas. She said to him, we're civic. We're civic dignitaries now. We're left to head to the church. Oh, uh, sorry, love, uh, just a suggestion. The last time I played an old dear like this, I took my teeth out. What do you reckon? Yeah, I suppose it's worth a try. 
You're taking it in your stride. Sorry, dear, am I putting you off? I find they sit in the head much easier if I'm doing something with my fingers at the same time. I did a television play here just a couple of weeks back. I was lucky enough to get the lead. But uh, film is my main passion. The other thing I was thinking was, how do you feel about a little dog? It could give me a nice bit of business. Put a little neckchief on it. The audience would love it. Can we take five minutes, please, everyone? Thank you, Betty. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have a think about it. I, I think it's really coming on. Thanks. I do. I, My uh, agent in London... Have you, have you got a London agent? No, as a matter of fact. No? Oh, you should definitely get one. Well, he says everything's quiet on the film front at the moment, so I thought, why not? It's only a week. What harm can that do? Tony, love. Yes. Sorry, but do I really need to say that line? Well... Because I can convey the meaning without it. Well, try without it, then. Thank you, dear. Who knew you'd turn into such a good writer? Scene seven, the Barlow's living room. William, that means you. Oh, excuse me. I know that this is a hard schedule for all of us, but what you've shown me here today is so much more than I ever could have hoped for. I try to find the truth in each character. I try to find the, the soul that Tony has already given you the key to. And above all, I need those lines word perfect for the dress rehearsal tomorrow. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you tomorrow, Thank you. same time. Is this unflattering enough for you? Hey, Elsie, you're about ready for the knacker yard. <laughs> you look perfect. Can I give you this? It's Lucky Heather. It's the Irish in me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'll cherish it. This has to work, Tony. Not just for you, for all of us. Standby studio, standby telecine on camera three, coming to two, captions on one. Roll telecine. I'll give you the cut to camera two. Standby everyone, enjoy. And five, four, three, two, one, and. There would be a theme tune, of course, something brass, power with a touch of melancholy. Well, thank you, Harry. Uh, appreciate all your good work. But I'd like to say that at this point I haven't formed an opinion. But I'd like to hear if anyone else has anything they'd like to say. Walter? Well, I'm sorry, Harry, but there isn't a single thing I like about it. I don't like the characters, I don't like the depressing sets, and I don't like the story. If we put that out, the advertisers will withdraw their business. Anyone else feel that way? Perhaps it could be rewritten as a comedy. Don't think of it as a comedy or a drama, although it's capable of being both. Think of it like Dickens, Household Words, a weekly story that could grip the whole country, like soap operas in the States. But soap operas go out in daytime, and there's a reason for that. They're watched by a few housewives and some hospital patients. That's not true. Cecil. As you know, I think the idea's good. But the North Country accent's the language of comedy. It's never taken seriously. Ina Sharples, is she meant to be funny? Look, this was a tryout. There are some casting hiccups to sort out. We just wanted to get a feel for the show and how it would play. We know we need to make some changes. Ina Sharples wasn't right, but the others are exceptional. You know, Pat Phoenix as Elsie, she's a real discovery. We have the beginnings of a great cast here, and they're all from Manchester, the city you chose to be the capital of your Granada land. This is a chance to open the viewer's eyes to the real North, What's the point of being in Manchester at all if you can't tell its story? Harry, please. Look, I'm sorry, Cecil, but I think this is important. You asked for quality. Rare quality. Well, that's what I'm offering you, a program of rare quality. Thank you, Harry. Anyone else? Right, come on. You start that end, I'll start here. Hiya, Pet. Right, Got right, any cooks need collecting? Just the one, Agnes. All right, then go on, blame me. 
Thanks, Dad. What's this? It's a pilot. When's it going out? It's not. VTR. The floor is tape running on seven. Just a minute, hang on. Is that the son they're rowing about? She's proud of him, all right. We've got the same clock in our parlour. Sorry, Jim, just keep it running. That's right, love. You tell him it's your money. What sort of times you call this? I have to wait for a taxi. Have you been drinking? Yes. I've been at a wake. Who died? My dreams. Oh, Tony. No, it's true. Florizel Street is real to me, it exists. Well, not used to before the, the Bernsteins flattened it to build the Granada land. Elsie's probably still trapped, huddled waiting to be rescued. Only she's not going to be, is she, Mum? And neither am I. Don't be too long. And for goodness sake, don't disturb your father. He's got an early start. Who could be calling at this time of night? Well, I don't know. It won't be good news, not at half past ten. Well, should he answer it? I can't. Pendleton 5698. Who is it? No, it's all right, it's my boss. Well, you can tell him from me. I don't know how they carry on in Canada, but this is England and nobody uses the telephone past 10 o'clock. Sorry, Harry. Yes, I know it's late, but I've got an idea. I think you're going to like it. building and you are to hand these out to everyone you see. First lunchtime. What? All lunchtime? If you don't mind. Well, it's coming to something when a person's expected to give up their lunch. Florizel Street. Yeah. Oh, it's okay, girls. It's that show they wanted ordinary clothes for. The first Granada programme where the costumes came exclusively from Berry Market. Ah, oh, you'll love it. Later, ladies. Uh, it's not lunchtime yet. Come on. I do appreciate you staying on while I get in the run of things. You know how it is when you come to a new street. You don't know anyone well, and what to look out for. Well, I've got to do with our food. Well, I'll tell you for why. I like my food swill down properly, that's why. <laughs> You'd better watch out, Ida. You'll be having your change into eating. What else do you want next. to do that for? You don't want to go wasting your sympathy on him. It's Elsie I'm sorry for. Some mothers do. I have nearly went mad when he found a bottle of peroxide I brought in. I wouldn't care, but it would have wanted to take a mark off my front too. <laughs> I might not know it, but he's very narrow-minded. I seem to have heard you say that for the first few short skirts, but the way that's taken my love into my chance for I didn't go behind your back. I just didn't float the idea past you first. There is a difference. Well, you know what the answer would have been. I mean, this is not the way we make decisions at Granada. I'm not suggesting the staff make the decisions. I simply wanted to show you how ordinary people would react to the show. Everyone who watched the transmission filled out one of these forms. They're not the comments of people who sit behind desks and bury their noses in broadsheets. They're the comments of people who ride on buses and sit in their living rooms at 7 o'clock. They're the comments of your audience. Yeah, I suppose they're all favorable. No, not all. But I'll tell you something. People either love the show or hate it. There's no middle ground. Well, if people don't love it, the advertisers won't touch it. Then we don't have a business. This is commercial television. That shouldn't mean the advertisers get to choose the programs. Yeah, Harry's right. We're not going to let the marketing people make the decisions. We know how they think. 
work before, let's do it again. We think differently, we look forward, not back with this. Why we employ creative people like Harry. This is unlike anything that's ever been on television before. You asked me to find new talent from the region. Well, Tony Warren is so new, he's barely out of school. You want to create shows that people will watch. Well, look at these forums. Okay, forgive me for the stunt. What can I say? I was inspired by Barnum. <laughs> You're a genius. Margaret! Yes. But well, what for? What now? Tony! Hey, what's, what's going on? What's happened? You've got 13 episodes to write. They've commissioned it. Florizel Street, a family drama serial by Tony Warren. Has he come up on the pools? The show has been commissioned. What show? The one you saw in my office. Florizel Street, but we're going to make it. Florizel Street, is that what it's called? Yeah. Sounds like a disinfectant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she might have a point. <laughs> I believe. Congratulations, you're in order. Thank you. Bloody great. 13 episodes. That's a lot to write, mind. Oh, well, I'm very quick. I've already written the first four. The rest are in me head. Right. Well, I was thinking of asking Harry if I could have a crack at a couple. Jump on the bandwagon, so to speak. Just to help out, like. That won't be necessary. Come on, Tony. No one can write 13 episodes straight off. It's impossible. Watch me. Keeping that title, then? Yes! No. No, sir, I won't listen to this. It's defeatist, that's what it is. Ina is alive out there somewhere. Well, if she is, she's doing a bloody good job at playing hide-and-seek. Look, she's a standalone character. She hasn't got a family or work colleagues. She could be cut. Ina Sharples is Florizel Street. If you haven't understood that, then you haven't understood anything. I do understand, but... Tony, you've created a part that's impossible to play. Actresses in their 70s just don't have the energy. You stand on any street corner in Salford and you'll find a dozen Enas. You're just not looking in the right place. Don't tell me where to look. Have you any idea what it's meant to me casting this show? Taking on actors who I've respected for years but never had the chance to give them their break. The look of delight on their faces when they realise it's more than ordering a pint or serving in a shop. I've done everything humanly possible to accommodate you, Tony. You brought in London actors. Because it's my job to find the best possible actor for each role. No one is saying any of this lightly, Tony. We've tried everyone. No one is right. Do you want to bring Nita back? No. no she's very funny, but she's not Ina Sharples. Believe me, Tony. I wanted to find Ina as much as you did. All right, look. There's someone I used to work with on Children's Hour. Who? She's a nightmare. She tried to get me fired. You won't like her. She lives in Blackpool. She'll insist on a welfare. Why have you never mentioned her? Because when I was 12, she threatened to smack my bottom. <laughs> I'll pay for the railfare. This is a woman I've got to meet. <laughs>
Can I help you? Violet Carson for a meeting with Margaret Morris. Oh, an audition? No, lad. A meeting. I haven't auditioned since 1937 and I have no intention of starting now. Yes? Uh, are you the director? Because if you are, I'm not happy to be kept waiting like this. Well, I'm not the director. I know you, don't I? Tony Simpson, the lad who thought he knew everything. Well, I'm, uh, I'm called Tony Warren now. You're not in this, are you? No, I've, um, I've written it. Oh, I? Well, not a bad script. For a beginner. Uh, I thought it might help if we have a little chat about Ina. Save your breath. I know all about Ina Sharples. She's just a backstreet bitch, isn't she? When I was 12, you threatened to smack my bottom. The way I remember it, I did smack it. And don't think I couldn't do it again. I've spoken to Derek. He's going for a gentler approach. But Tony's not going to like it. You have to. You're still angry with him. Small boat, that's what I was told. There's nothing small boat about Violet Carlson. Quiet on the floor, please. Clear. Violet, this is your mark. Derek's staying on the floor. Kept that one up your sleeve, didn't you? Oh, don't let the little old lady out fool you. This one's got teeth. Take it very gently at first. Don't rush it. I think you can even afford to play against the lines. Try to bring out a more... a gentler side to Ina, one that isn't so obvious. What's he telling her? Relax. Are you telling me to play her soft? Yes, I suppose I am. Well, that's what you want. I suppose you are the director. Roll tape, please. Oh, stand by, studio. You trying to tell me to begin, lad? When you only had to ask. Where are you being buried? I've not given it much thought. Well, you should. But think on you don't go to that crematorium down the road. As the coffin rolls away, they play Moonlight and Roses. I spoke to the superintendent personally, and he said, that's not Moonlight and Roses, that's Andantina. So I said, Andantina or no Andantina, I'm rolling away to Crimond. Are those fancies today's? Yes. I'll take half a dozen and no eclairs. You're from Esmeralda Street, aren't you? OK, let's hold it there, please. Well, she's mellowed, that's all I can say. I really don't think we should spend any more time on this. Sorry, Tony, but this really is it. Excuse me, Tony Simpson, or whatever it is you're calling yourself these days. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Can I do it again? As I think it should be done. Tell her yes. Tell, tell, tell her yes. They're saying yes, please. Right. OK, let's go again. Roll tape, please. Well, are you going to give me that silly little wave or not? Where are you being buried? I'm not giving it much thought. Well, you should. But think on you don't go to that crematorium down road. As the coffin rolls away, they play Moonlight and Roses. Oh, I spoke to the superintendent in particular. He said, Moonlight and Roses, that's not Moonlight and Roses, that's Andantina. I said, Andantina and no Andantina, I'm rolling away to Crimond. And then fancies today's. Yes. I took half a dozen and no eclairs. I said, no eclairs. You're from Esmeralda Street, aren't you? That's right. And weren't you on the bar at the fancies? What are you looking like that cheese? for? She's very good. You got any kids? No. Uh, better off without them. A bottle of bleach. She's perfect. More trouble than they were. So why are you still wearing it's that face? street, eh? Very bay window down there, aren't they? You don't know her. Well, you find it very different up here. There's some very funny people in this street. <laughs> <laughs> She's perfect. Hey, why didn't you mention her before? <laughs> 
wonderful. I don't know if you noticed, but I repeated the line about the eclairs. Do you think they'll mind? No, no, I don't think they'll mind at all. There. You'll do. Can you do something about these shoes? They're pinching something awful. Hey, hold on a tick. I'm sure I can find something. Pull that in a bit tighter. They've padded me out to make me look older. The glamour of television. <laughs> hmm. Thank you. No, I mean it. Thank you. What for? Elsie Tanner. I'd given up, you know. I pretty well swore to myself I was never going to another bloody audition. Had them up to here. Come in, flash your tits, piss off, it's no life. Well, why did you come in, then? Let's just say I've always been open to persuasion. Hmm. Got me into a lot of trouble in the past, I can tell you. <laughs> but then I read your script, and I thought to myself, I know this street, and I know all the people in it. Rubbing along in those tiny little houses. And I know Elsie. Biting her tongue whenever customers give her the runaround. <sighs> Getting nostalgic over the war whenever she tastes American whiskey. You're a bloody genius. And I don't care who hears me say so. Thank you. I couldn't have dreamt of a better Elsie. I tell you what. How about you and me go down to the Union on the canal and have a drink? How do you know about the Union? I know all sorts. You can be yourself round me. And you round me. Let's see if either of these fit the bill. All right, I give up. Change it, you've never liked it. No one knows what it means. It doesn't mean anything. Look, I've been here 11 hours today. I've got six more scripts to write. I can't close my eyes without Annie Walker doing the foxtrot with P.T. Barnum. And now you want me to conjure up a title out of thin bloody air? Well, I can't do it. Well, don't. We'll, we'll do it. We'll, we'll think of one. Something simple. Go home, get some rest. Well, if you want simple, you've got Maffa King, Victory, Coronation or Jubilee. No battles. Well, that leaves two. Take your pick. <coughs> Jubilee or coronation. Let's go to the pub. No expense spared, I see. Do you want to try it on? No, but I suppose I'll have to. What is that smell? It has been washed. And it should have been fumigated. What about my head? They're uh, thinking a hairnet. Oh, are they? I was so pleased you'd agreed to join us again, William. Oh, well, it's only 13 episodes, isn't it? So lucky for us that we get to work with you before you make it big in the pictures. is a woman who's buried children, watched her man beg for work, and still gets down on her knees every night to pray. Good. Well, make it want you first. They can want. There's no powder or rouge touching this face. If it's good enough for God, it's good enough for Granada. Camera three, are you all right on the move after shot seven? If not, camera two can take that last close-up. Yeah. Right, do that then. Derek, you're going to have to go down. She's in the lighting grip. Don't ask me how she got up there. Tony! Get them down here, tell Edna it's the same day so there's no costume change. Give Modi something to do in the doorway. Oh, where's Tony? He should be here. Tony, it's starting. I've got to go. I need you with me. Well, I'm not coming, I can't. Stop being such a drama queen. I will when you will. Miss Phoenix to Studio 2 immediately, please. Bugger. Go on. Go! Give him what for? Anything back. It's bad luck. 
Honestly. Shouldn't you be on your own set? Oh, yeah, of course. Well, there. Uh, sorry. Did you see the dress rehearsal? Some of it. It's different. No, it's nothing like anything the BBC's got, that's for sure. And the new name is better, more authority. Let's hope the audience agree. Okay, people, this is it. Going live in ten. Break a leg, everyone. Edna in wardrobe thinks this could run as long as the archers. Ye gods, I hope not. Come into caption in four, three, two, one, and... Florence, you mean? Hey. Well, that's your real name. 